Good morning. David Copperfield, Chapter 4. Chapter 3 was talking about Salem House and the new character that appeared. Okay, Mr. Mel, Mr. Creakle, Tommy Traddles, and James Steer Fourth. School begins. School begins. The content of this chapter. David's first day at school and Mr. Creek. Steer forth and Mr. Mel. David's feelings. Let's start. David's feelings. David's first day at school and Mr. Creek. On the first day, Mr. Creekle entered the class. All the students kept quiet, okay, to listen to him. He started threatening the boy by telling them, I will punish. If you don't study, I will do, I will, I will, I will. And that totally changed the education uh, atmosphere for the students. They couldn't learn because they were all the time afraid to do mistakes, to be punished, okay? Classes began and Mr. Creakle threatened to beat any students who didn't apply themselves in the new term. Okay, if you do anything, I will like this. So, as I told you, no learning or no uh, good learning atmosphere to help the students to know any new information. He then walked over to David and hit him with his cane. He was walking in the class. He saw David, he hit him without doing anything in front of the other students. Creakle did the same to other boys. He enjoyed, he enjoyed his profession. Why? He enjoyed his profession because he felt very happy while hitting or beating the students, okay, especially the young ones, and he was enjoying watching them trying to rub, to rub the marks on their hands that he used to do to them by his cane, okay? He enjoyed hitting and marking the boys, marking the boys with his cane especially the young ones. The third point, Mr. Creek took off David's sign, the sign, he refused to take it off, but finally he took it off. Why? Because while hitting him on the back, the sign stood against the, the cane. So remove it, I want to hit you, okay? Mr. Creakle took off David's sign just because it prevented or stopped him from hitting David on his back. Mr. Creakle punished Traddles, one of his example or the examples one of the examples to show that mr creakle wasn't a fair person that he punished traddles just because steer forth loved in the church what does it mean they were on sunday at the church and steer forth laughed loudly steer forth was favorite to mr creakle why because his mother used to pay money okay for him to treat her son in a different way so he could do nothing to steer forth but steer forth laughed in in the uh, the church and all the boys they heard him so he must punish anyone he took tommy traddles okay and punished him instead of steer forth and tommy traddles was a good friend he didn't say anything he didn't say no i didn't love steer forth was the one who loved okay he couldn't punish steer forth because his mother used to pay money for special treatment for her son or to her son 
The students at Salem House generally learned little because of their fear of Mr. Krieger. David, however, did manage to pick up some knowledge from Mr. Mill. Steerforth and Mr. Mill. Now, this part, it needs explanation and reading from you. Please read every single word to understand. One day, Mr. Crickle was not in school. It was Saturday. Okay, and Mr. Mel was in charge of the school. He was asked to take care of the, 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 the students. The students were noisy and they kept on making a lot of voice and, and, and. Okay, Mr. Mel entered the class and he ordered them to be silent, to keep quiet. Okay, they didn't listen to him at the beginning. Then he said loudly, be quiet, be silent. James Steerforth, because he knew that he was favorite to Mr. Creakle and no one could touch him, he stood like this, like this, on the wall and spoke in a very rude way with Mr. Mel. He told him, silence yourself. All the students were shocked because the way he was talking to Mr. Mel. Then Mr. Mel, with a good way, a polite way, he told him, how uh, or uh, how any do you speak with a gentleman like me okay in such a rude way steerforth said a gentleman where is he a gentleman where is he so the way he spoke with mr mel was totally rude okay Mr. Mel, uh, sorry, the first point I will read it. When Mr. Creakle was absent, Mr. Mel was in charge of the school. The students were more or less free to do what they liked. Mr. Mel was supposed to keep order, but the boys were so excited. They started jumping out of their seats, shouting and laughing at him for his poverty, his poor clothing, his mother and anything they could think of. It means they were laughing, okay, at Mr. Mel, the way he used to dress, the way his, uh, his uh, coat was, uh, the way his mother used to live, like this, okay, that he was poor. Mr. Mel ordered them to be quiet, but Steerforth refused, as I told you. Mr. Mel told Steerforth that he was fully aware of the influence he exerted over everyone at school. I know that you are favorite. All what I read, it means I know that you are favorite to Mr. Creek. But it was shameful of him to insult a gentleman, shameful of Steerforth. Him he here, go back. Him here is for steer forth, to insult a gentleman for something he couldn't help, which is his poverty. They kept on laughing because Mr. Mel was poor, okay? Steerforth told Mr. Mel that he was a beggar, the one who took money from people in the streets, who lived on charity. That made Mr. Mel totally angry, okay? Mr. Creakle arrived while they were fighting together. Mr. Mel and Steerforth were quarreling together. Mr. Mel arrived, okay? And he asked, what is going on? He asked Steerforth, not the teacher, which was totally wrong from Mr. Creakle. Mr. Uh, Creakle asked Steerforth and Steerforth said that Mr. Mel said that he was favorite and that he used to live on charity with his mother. So Mr. Creakle took uh, the unfair decision which was to fire Mr. Mel by telling him this school is not a school for charity and number two you spoke about favorism, which is not found in that school, okay? 
Mr. Crickle said that, that there was no favorism, as I told you, at Salem House, and that Salem House wasn't a school for charity. So Mr. Crickle fired him on the spot, go out. All the students felt very sad, okay, for Mr. Mill. And they uh, spoke with the Tommy Traddles, sorry, with the Steerforth. Tommy Traddles kept crying for Mr. Mill. And he told the Steerforth that he did a great mistake by helping Mr. Creakle to fire that poor man from his job. So Steerforth felt guilty and he called his mother to send some money to Mr. Mill and his mother in their, uh, out to their house. David felt sad and guilty for his role in Mr. Mel's firing. Why? All the students, they knew nothing about Mr. Mel's life. Okay, but when David went to spend a night with him, when he was taking him from the inn to Salem House, and David saw the a poor house, he told Steerforth about Mr. Mel's poor life without intention. He didn't intend to insult Mr. Mel or to say anything bad about him, but he spoke with Steerforth about their poor life. And Steerforth used David's words against Mr. Mel and insulted him and spoke with him in a bad way. What with having told Steerforth about Mr. Mel's poverty? All the students were sad, but they couldn't show that out of fear. They were afraid of Mr. Creakle. Traddles said that Steerforth had behaved badly by making Mr. Mel lost his job. Steerforth retorted that he planned to write to his mother and made sure that the, the Mills, Mr. Mill and his mother, got some money uh, from his mother. The boys were relieved, they were a little bit happy to hear that from Steerforth. Finally, thank you for listening.